Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 245 and today is our lesson number 155. Page number 245, the very last problem on the page, page uh, problem number 20. Problem number 20 deals with the concept of equation of a circle. So they give you, they tell you that for a circle with the equation x minus 1 whole square plus y plus 1 whole square equals 20, they want us to answer a few questions. I'm going to go through this question fairly quickly. I'm not going to go spend time explaining every nitty-gritty detail as to why the cent this this equation that you see there is written in what is known as a standard form. And just like you've been we have been doing equation of a line where the equation of a line is written in a certain standard form, just by visual inspection you can tell what the slope of the line is, you can tell what the y-intercept is and so on and so forth. Similarly, for a circle, when the equation is written in a standard form, just by the visual inspection, one can tell what, what, what its center is and what, what its radius is, which is what I'm going to do right now without providing any explanation whatsoever. If you are interested in learning where this, this standard form comes from, the derivation you will find, the derivation of the equation of the circle, I spent three days on it, you will find it, just type in revised, G, revised GRE math, day 125, 126, and 127, if you're curious and if you want to learn more about it. So the very first question they ask you is the coordinates of the center. There you go. The coordinates of the center are, well, whatever you see here, whatever we see here in the parentheses, we see a negative one if it's x, negative one, therefore the center is a positive one. Don't ask me why, as I said, watch those three days and you will understand it. That's where I spend the time to derive the equation. So I don't, I don't, I'm not asking you to simply memorize it. If you want to understand it, if you want to understand the concept, it is there. Similarly, the y coordinates of the, of the center, since this is plus one, therefore the y coordinate is minus one. That's all. The next question they ask you is the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is the whatever quantity that you see there being squared. Here we see 20. Here we see 20, but technically what it is is, it is the square root of 20 being squared. Square root of 20 being squared is the same as 20. So whatever this, whatever quantity this, for example, or for example, had it been 100, this, then it, it would be, would have written, had it been 100 here, had it been 100, we would have written as square root of 100, squared. Of course, square root of 100 is 10. 10 squared gives you back to where you start out at 100. Here it is 20. So therefore, square root of 20 squared, and therefore the radius is square root of 20. The last thing that they ask you is the area of the circle. Area of the circle, as we all know, is pi r squared. Pi r squared, pi times r, which we know is square root of 20, squared, which is 20, so it's just, so it's just 20 pi. That's all, that's all there is. That was the end of it. On the following page, things get a bit prickly. On the following page, on page number 246, if you turn to it, starting, uh, not starting rather, uh, in problem number 21, there are five different functions where they ask you for the domain and the shape of the uh, graph and the and the y-intercepts and all those interesting stuff and the slope and all that. We'll do that tomorrow, okay? We'll start doing those tomorrow. I'll do one at a time, one day at a time, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay? I'll see you then. Bye.